Hello, friend, and welcome back. Today, we are talking about a longtime favorite of mine. Uh, it is a medical grade skincare brand. It's Skin Better Science Alto Defense Serum. As always, let's start off with packaging. This is, I mean, it's one of my favorite kinds of packaging in general, but it is not very recyclable, which is a big bummer. Uh, but as far as maintaining the stability of the product and just ease of use, this is pretty top notch. The only really silly complaint I have is that yes, I love the twist up top and it keeps it so that when you're traveling, nothing's gonna spill out or anything like that. But when your hands are like moisturized and slippery with other serums, things like that, like in the morning, this is just tricky to turn, so. Just a, a small detail, maybe Skin Better Science folks, if you're watching, um, I don't know, find some grip for the outside of this. It's just tricky sometimes. So this is an antioxidant serum. We will get into all the details about it, but let's get a little look at what it looks like. It is just a very lightweight lotion texture. It definitely doesn't have like a serum-y texture. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not a great scent, but it goes away so, so fast. It's just as soon as you get it onto your skin, uh, it's pretty much gone by then. But there is our comparison. Just, you know, it just has a simple, comfortable, light lotion texture finish. I think it does a good job both day and night. Um, even when I'm layering a bunch of products, this is very concentrated. So um, one pump is all you're supposed to use for face, and then another pump to neck. It says apply a thin layer morning and evening to face, neck, and decollete prior to applying your Skin Better Science regimen. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's very agreeable with most skin types, whether you're oily or dry or somewhere in between. It blends nicely through beard texture. It doesn't have like a really notable amount of slip. So it's not super, super nice from that standpoint, getting it through the beard. But um, if you just put like some light dots, it's easy enough to spread it through evenly. It is a gentle antioxidant serum. And that's why I've kept it around for so long is it doesn't break me out. It doesn't irritate my skin like some ascorbic acids can, like many ascorbic acids can. Um, it plays nicely with my other serums. I know that it is nice and balanced. So, um, I can put it on and not worry about it throwing off peptides or really delicate other ingredients. It really just, if I'm if I'm playing around with new products, this is what I come back to for my antioxidant because I know it's gonna give me good protection um, without, without having to think about it. I can put it on twice a day and I can put a lot of it on twice a day if I really want to, if I'm gonna get a lot of sun exposure. And it still just feels very natural on my skin and then I forget that it's there. I like that in a product. It's very no muss, no fuss. You can just keep using it. And when I'm trying a bunch of different things, I want something I don't have to think about. The obligatory footnote I always have about medical grade skincare is that in the United States, the FDA does not recognize a difference between mass market cosmetics and medical grade skincare. There is no legal distinction. They can't have access to higher concentrations or special ingredients that other brands can't have access to. At the end of the day, remember that medical grade skincare is a marketing term. There's no inherent difference between that product and something else that isn't marketed as medical grade. Yeah, most of the brands that call themselves medical grade do put some serious effort in and they release published studies, which I love because then you can actually read the studies and how they tested it and what they tested it against. And you can, yeah, you can read all that data. They release it for peer review, which does give them um, a step up as far as uh, their credibility because they make their stuff widely available so that everyone can scrutinize it. Um, now, there are some smaller brands that aren't medical grade that do that as well. It's just there's my there's my soapbox. We're going to dive into the research just for a little bit, and it explains why research is so helpful and why it can tell many different stories as well. All right, we're going old school with our visual aids today. Uh, this is a figure that I pulled from the Skin Better Science uh, test between CE Ferulic and Alto Defense, the original serum. And it shows, this side shows us how much oxidative stress 
and then our timeline is at the bottom. This is a box and whisker plot, which means that these dots in the middle show the average and the little hash at the top shows the highest result and the little hash at the bottom shows the lowest result. The top line is CE Ferulic, the bottom is Alto Advanced. What we can see is that CE Ferulic, each of their plots has a really wide range of how much oxidative stress that scenario showed. Um, so these were done on little skin biopsy samples. Uh, they weren't real people, but they were real skin. And it showed that they applied CE Ferulic the same amount to each of these skin samples. So we see this really wide range in the CE Ferulic uh, example. So way up here means that it really wasn't working that well. Way down here means it was working really well, but still not quite as well as Alto Defense Serum. The Alto Defense Serum, on the other hand, has these plots that are really narrow, so really tight groups so that each of the skin biopsies showed a very similar amount of protection from Alto Defense versus the skin biopsies that got CE Ferulic showed a really wide range of how much oxidative stress they still got. But at the end of the day, Alto Defense still showed on average having 53% better antioxidant protection than uh, the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic. I would rather have a multitude of ingredients that are working towards the same goal. In this case, that's to protect me from oxidative damage. The biggest one we think of is UV damage. Uh, the sun is always trying to steal our collagen and break us down, but um, antioxidants and sunscreens and internal or endogenous antioxidants protect us from just falling apart. Alto Defense led with the premise that they have water, lipid, and enzyme-based antioxidants, and 19 of them in all total, working to protect your skin from oxidative damage, which I think is more in tune with my approach to skincare of, I would rather have a multitude of ingredients working to protect me versus relying on just a couple of superstar ingredients to do all the legwork. I feel like that leaves us open to more opportunity for failure. Like if the conditions aren't perfect to keep those couple ingredients really stable or active on my skin, then I'm out of luck versus if I have a whole multitude of ingredients, it's much less likely that all of those would fail me or all of those would become overwhelmed by oxidative stressors and leave me protectionless. The other thing we see is that when you have a multitude of ingredients, you can use smaller concentrations of each of those versus if you have a couple of superstar ingredients, chances are they're gonna have to be at a pretty high concentration to be effective and do all the things we need them to do. And whenever there are higher concentrations of ingredients, you run a higher likelihood of irritation. Okay, let's move on from the research. Let's just talk about ingredients. We're not gonna talk about all 19 antioxidants other than to say they're well-researched. They are, some of them are a little novel, um, but generally they're all well-researched, well-regarded antioxidants, both plant origin as well as synthetic origin. It does have vitamin C and E. Vitamin C is THD ascorbate or tetrahexadiesyl ascorbate. It's the oil soluble, very stable version of vitamin C or one of them. Um, vitamin E is tocopherol. There's also CoQ10, which we're familiar with, nice energizing antioxidant, as well as licorice extract, which I love because it's gonna help with brightening and soothing. There are also some nice plant-based extracts like acai, turmeric, cacao, green tea, grapeseed, olive, um, these are nice polyphenol rich superfood extracts as they call them. Um, they're just, they're great antioxidants. They do a lot of things, but for these purposes, we're looking to them for soothing antioxidant benefits, um, as well as carnosine, which is a biomimetic peptide. Uh, it's anti-glycation, anti-infrared, which is cool. So just circling back, it does have a nice wide range of antioxidants. Uh, the advanced version of it, I have tried a couple times, and in my experience, it tends to break people out. Um, not everybody, but certainly more people than this one does, so I steer away from it. I think this does a good job for me, but if you want to try the advanced option, uh, it has some DNA repair technology focusing on intrinsic aging factors, so you're on like what mitochondria uh, processes 
uh, produces reactive oxygen species. So um, internal protection, it adds on just a little bit more of that, but I think this is great for most folks. It still does have a medical grade uh, price point. So this one is the 1.7 fluid ounce or 50 milliliter option, uh, and that runs retail of 235 US dollars. The other thing, I love that Skin Better publishes this. Uh, they count the number of pumps of product that are in here. So the 1.7 fluid ounce has 225 pumps in it, and the one fluid ounce or 30 milliliter has 150 pumps to it. That one runs 170 US dollars. Um, I just want you to know that this one isn't gonna be a really aggressive brightening agent. Uh, I really just treat it as antioxidant protection, especially when I know I'm gonna be out in the elements, whether it's uh, skiing or sun exposure. This is just my antioxidant protection. They do have some clinical data on soothing and calming redness and light, some, some anti-wrinkle and anti uh, pigmentation stuff, but I think you want a dedicated product for that if that's what you're really looking towards. This one should be treated just as your antioxidant serum that's going to be good for sensitive skin, um, mildly calming, soothing, and yeah, just, just leave it at that because if you try this for brightening, I think you'll be disappointed. Let's call this our collagen insurance policy. I'm interested in what your routines are. Do you use just an antioxidant serum? Do you use a vitamin C serum for your antioxidants? How do you get your protection, other than sunscreen, of course, and do you use it daily, twice a day? Very interested to know what y'all are using. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I do try to get back to everyone pretty quickly. Uh, and if you have recommendations or requests, leave those down below as well. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, until next time, my friend, be well.